This is the time of year anglers are gearing up for ice fishing. Fishery Supervisor Scott Gangle will give us a preview on what anglers can expect this year on the ice. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Scott, on an average year, how popular is ice fishing in North Dakota? Well, Mike, on an average year, ice fishing is actually pretty popular. We see about 25% of our anglers partake in ice fishing every year, you know, compared to summer fishing. And that's an average, and it can vary quite a bit from year to year just because of the weather conditions out there and stuff. Last year, ice fishing was not very popular with the snow that we had on the lakes. Like you mentioned, Scott, uh, last year, a lot of snow started early, went late. How does that affect our fisheries, our lakes, uh, with the heavy snow starting early and, and really not coming off until April? Yeah, the number one thing, again, is access. And, and we, we saw access was very poor from the beginning. The weather kind of moderated and stuff. And people actually, we, that's when we saw most of our ice fishing was that six week stretch there in probably January to early February, because people were able to get out onto the lakes. The accesses could be maintained. Um, some, of the, some of the conditions were a lot better for getting out there. Then later in the winter, we started seeing blizzards again, and it just kind of put everything on, on pause again until the ice went off. And so access was the biggest factor last year. The second factor that those snowstorms really affected was our fish populations. When we have fish populations that are in lakes that are covered with snow, um, for the majority of winter, that's when we start seeing winter kill conditions setting in. And winter kill is just a depletion of oxygen under the ice. That's not uncommon on, on some of our lakes. We actually see that even on a good year, we see some winter kill conditions in some lakes. But last year was such an extreme winter that we had um, really poor conditions and uh, probably more lakes than we've ever seen across the state. How did you replenish the fish populations in some of those lakes where fish actually did die? So what we, what we do, our, our biologists do monitor conditions in the lakes. And in February, they went out and, and monitored lakes for oxygen levels. When the oxygen levels are low, we kind of made a note of that and, and, and tracked those lakes into the spring. Come spring, we, we went out and did some sampling. We didn't get to every lake, but we got to as many as we could in, in short order. And it took us most of the spring and summer through a lot of our routine sampling. In places where we saw fish kills, we restocked them as soon as we could. And so if it was a, if it was a lake full of walleye or pike, we may have put fingerlings in there from the hatchery this spring or adults. Um, oftentimes we'll trap adult fish from other lakes, perch, bluegill, other panfish. We'll take adults from other lakes um, and put them in there so that they spawn in the lake and then that'll replenish the, the fish population. So some of those lakes last year that, that had winter kill probably had some setbacks, but we're gonna get those back up and running as quickly as possible. And, and most of them did get fish already. So it'll only be a couple, couple more years before there's catchable fish in there. A lot of the lakes that did winter kill too, I should say, were, were a lot of the community ponds, the fisheries that we stock with adult fish every year so that those communities have fish to catch every year. And those ponds actually do winter kill quite often, so that's not a big surprise there. How about early ice safety? Let's talk when an angler is ready to go out on the ice, they should make sure they take the precautions necessary. Ice safety is a big concern if you're going out on those, on those early ice days. Um, make sure that you take some precautions. You know, it's, it's good to take a spud bar and, and check ice depths frequently as you're walking out. Um, make sure that you're not driving on it unless you know how thick the ice is. And, and it's always good to have, um, let somebody know where you're gonna be fishing and, and, and take you know, some ice picks. If you do fall through the ice, they can really help you to get off or get back up onto the ice. You know, just just to, to take some safety precautions to let, let people know where you're gonna be and, and, and be safe out there. Um, that's another question that we get a lot from people is, you know, do we monitor ice thickness? And do we have that reported anywhere? And, and that's, that's, a, that's a huge safety issue. And, and people wanna know whether the ice is safe, but the thing that they have to understand is that ice can never be 100% safe. And we won't give you a false feeling of safety without providing uh, or putting some of the responsibility on the anglers so that they are responsible for checking the ice thickness for themselves. Because honestly, ice can vary quite a bit from lake to lake. And even on some lakes, the ice thickness can vary quite a bit from one location to another, just depending on whether there's springs 
or shallow water or islands, sunken islands in places where you know, they might attract a little sunlight. So the ice thickness can vary quite a bit on some lakes and, and uh, there's no way to really monitor that. In real time, that could actually give people a, a, a true safe sense of ice thickness. Scott, if somebody wants to know, an angler wants to know what you stocked in what lake or where to go fishing, is there, is there a place on our website uh, that would give them that information? Yeah, our website is full of information for anglers who want to plan their fishing trips. Um, we have a Where to Fish page that contains most of that stuff that'll, that'll help guide your fishing trips. One of, the, one of the quickest ways of getting information is to just read the description of the fishery that's listed under every lake. So if you search a lake, um, you can search by name, you can search by county, you can search by a few different ways, and you pull up that lake, each biologist that manages those lakes is putting in a description of what to expect. It's just kind of a short and informal description. So if it winter killed and there's nothing to catch there, um, there, there should be a note in there. And the guys are updating that right now. So by the time people are venturing forth to go ice fishing this winter, that information should be pretty up to date. So that should contain a lot of the, a lot of the, the descriptive um, text from, from last year. Depending on how quickly we can get our data all cleaned up, our netting reports will be available too. So wherever we did sample a lake, and again, we don't get to every lake, but wherever we did sample, um, those netting reports should be available and up to date for every lake starting in about the, the early part of, or middle of December. Scott, ice anglers target really three main fish species, walleye, pike, and perch. Of course, there's crappie, bluegill, trout, and other fish, but mm -hmm. let's talk walleye populations in our lakes. What can anglers expect this winter? Well, I think, you know, I think people are gonna see pretty constant walleye populations. You know, I'm talking on a statewide basis. You know, things might vary from, from region to region, but overall, I think our walleye populations are doing really well. Going back to the winter kill discussion, you know, we really didn't lose many walleye populations. Those fisheries that, that have done well consistently um, continue to do well. On a statewide level, let's talk our state fish, the Northern Pike. Northern Pike are doing, doing well also. Um, there may be a few fewer numbers on the landscape just because of, uh, they, they like flood conditions. They like rising water and flooded vegetation to spawn. And, and honestly, with the tremendous snowpack we had last winter, we didn't really see that much um, runoff. It, the, the melt was slow. There wasn't a lot of newly flooded vegetation. And our lakes, if they came up, they came up only slightly. And so we didn't see a lot of reproduction last year, but where, where there are pike populations, they're, they're also maintaining fairly well. And I think anglers who, who have a history of targeting pike in some of these lakes will know where to go and, and be successful where they've hit, targeted them in the past. Perch is always a popular uh, species in the wintertime. What, how are we looking for perch? You know, our perch, perch fisheries haven't really changed much since last year. We do have you know, quite a few still in the Stutzman County, Barnes County, those central North Dakota areas, but um, there's a lot of lakes with some perch in them, but there's not a lot of like real sleeper lakes with, with tons of, of nice perch, but people can still go out and again, check our website, look at the fish netting reports and uh, the fishery descriptions out there and, and you'll be able to find some perch lakes with some good perch fishing. Scott, dark house spear fishing has been around for over 20 years. Uh, last year we had a change, but basically the change was is you could target walleye on the big three lakes. Uh, Lake Sakakawea, Devil's Lake, and Lake Oahe. What'd you hear? We expected harvest to be pretty low. Um, every year we do a, a survey of dark house spears, and so we, we did ask them whether they harvested walleye, and, and, and there was some harvest last year, but it was very low, like in the hundreds, like a few hundred walleye were harvested overall in the entire state for the winter, you know, on all those systems. So it, it kind of like expected, it, it gave people an extra opportunity. Walleye aren't necessarily the, the most sought after species, but people are, are targeting northern pike and they can see a walleye swim through the hole and it gives them an opportunity to harvest that walleye. Uh, we don't expect it to have any impact whatsoever on, on populations and, and harvest being as low as it is showed us that that's going to be the case. Uh, this is a good time to remind anglers that do want to spearfish, uh, they need to register. Yes, you do need to register to spearfish, and that's been in place ever since we started having the season. And from that registration, we simply are able to track uh, spearfishing trends. We do a survey after every uh, season to 
look at trends in, in, in spearfishing harvest, look at trends in participation, and, and where a lot of the activity occurred. And, and that gives us some good information to know where the sport is going in the future. Let's move into litter on the ice, Scott. Uh, people, they need to pick up their trash. Don't throw your minnows on the ice. Explain that, our wardens see that every year. Well, yeah, we do see that every year, and that's a major complaint of, of anglers who come up and, and find a, a mess on the ice. It's also a major complaint of, of landowners. We have a lot of landowners. Uh, a lot of our fishing lakes, access is provided through easements by private landowners who want to give the public some place to fish. But then one of the number one complaints that we get from those landowners is the trash left behind. You know, it's, it's against a lot of litter. So don't litter, don't leave your trash on the ice, don't leave your cigarette butts on the ice, don't leave your, um, don't leave anything on the ice. When you leave the ice, leave it the way, you, the way it came. You need to make sure that you're not, if you clean your fish on the ice, you know, you can't leave your fish guts on the ice. Make sure that you pick up your fish guts and take them with you. Uh, it's not against a lot of, to clean your fish on the ice, but just clean up after yourself so you're not leaving a mess for anybody that comes behind you. Scott, every year at the end of the year, we allow a free ice fishing weekend for residents. Explain that. Yeah, we've had um, for a few years now a free ice fishing weekend. It's the last, it's the weekend after Christmas, so it's December 30th and 31st this year, I believe. And it's for residents of North Dakota. You can go out and fish without a fishing license. And so, since there's a little bit of gear involved that to drill holes in the ice and, and stuff, it, um, it might be good that if you have that gear and, and you ice fish regularly to, to take somebody out fishing with you. And you can take your, your friends, relatives, neighbors, anybody that is a resident of North Dakota can fish without a license. So that's a good, good way to get people out. We, we try to target that break between Christmas and New Year so that um, families, when they're together and they want to do a little fishing, they can get out and fish. And hopefully the weather is nice and they can enjoy it this year. And they have to follow all the rules and regulations. Yep, the only, the only thing that is, is lifted for that weekend is the, the requirement for a fishing license if you're a resident. Everything else is still um, in place as far as rules and regulations, daily limits, and, and, and so on. So if weather allows, should be a good year for ice fishing. And you know, the, the way the weather is stacking up right now and they're forecasting you know, the El Nino pattern this winter, I think, I think we'll be setting up for a pretty good ice fishing year. A lot of great information, Scott, thank you. Thank you.